Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you've all been well. It's currently Sunday evening. I literally got home from the Gold Coast this morning, but I've been so excited to film this video that I just could not wait any longer. So I've decided to split this topic into two separate videos because it was just going to be too long otherwise. So today we're going to talk all about the clothing that I would purchase first if I had to start my wardrobe from scratch. And then the next video I want to talk all about handbags, shoes and accessories. So the reason that I even thought about filming this video is because we're coming into those transitional months. I am looking to add some new pieces of clothing to my wardrobe, but before I purchase anything new, I do like to do a little bit of a reset, have a look at what I already have, and just be really mindful about what I am going to purchase next. Because if I have learned anything, it is those impulse purchases that I regret the most. So before I run through each of the pieces, I wanted to share with you guys my wardrobe rules, because I do have rules when it comes to my wardrobe. For me personally, it just works out easier, cheaper, more sustainable if I stick to these rules. Now the first one is obviously only buying pieces that fit within my color palette. So I feel like once I realized that having a color palette was like an essential for a capsule wardrobe, that is when it, everything just got a little bit easier. Now when I head into the shops, I might look at a tank top, it comes in 10 different colors. I know exactly which colors are going to go with my wardrobe and I only purchase those. And although sometimes it can be fun to add something a little bit different and obviously do what you want, but I know in those impulse moments where I've just gone for something that's a little bit crazy and a little bit trendy, they're the first items that are heading to the charity store next time I do a wardrobe clear out. So sticking to a color palette is what I had in the back of my mind when I was um, choosing all of these pieces. The second thing is I always like to go for clothing that can be dressed up and dressed down. If you watch any of my capsule wardrobe videos, you know that I say that line so much. This can be dressed up, it can be dressed down. And what I mean by that is you want to go for the clothing that has that versatility because there are so many variations of, say for example, denim shorts. So many different variations, different colors of blues, different hems, different pockets. You know, you go for more of the cargo kind. Um, but for me personally, I like to go for ones that are just high-waisted, they've got no rips in them, they're hemmed, they're a pretty standard blue colour, um, there's no you know crazy pockets on them because that, that way if I did want to dress them up potentially on holiday or something, wear it with a nice blouse and head out to dinner, then I could. And it's the same with dresses, it's the same with shoes, if I'm buying sneakers I try not to go too sporty and too um, casual because if I want to wet pair those sneakers with like a skirt or a dress, I can. And once I also realized that, it also opened a lot of doors for me because a lot of my pieces now can be worn a lot of different ways and whenever I'm packing for holiday day I'm not saying oh this is a day outfit and this is a night fit outfit they can kind of transition and take me right through the day into the night so that's been a really great little realization that I've had another thing is when is the right time to add trendy pieces I feel like the term capsule wardrobe has quite a negative um, some people just hate capsule wardrobes because they think they're very minimal they think they're very timeless and quite boring and I completely understand because for me, I was going on this capsule wardrobe journey, very minimal, very timeless for so long. And just recently I've started to add the odd trend piece. I'm having so much more fun and I'm really enjoying trying out new things, but I'm just not taking that too far. So there is a really fine line when it comes to trendy pieces, but I do understand that sometimes it is fun to follow trends. You know, you'll look back, you know, when you're 50 years old and go, oh, that's right. That was so in at the time. And I think there's nothing wrong with following trends, but you just don't want to have too many pieces that are too trendy so just obviously trying to keep like 80 to 90 percent of your wardrobe quite minimal and quite timeless and then just adding the odd trend piece and then the other thing i've just realized recently and of course this will change because this is a trend in itself i'm definitely more tonal now so i'm trying to steer away from black or white so instead of buying black pieces of clothing i'm definitely opting for more so for example i want to put on some active wear leggings and they're just plain black and i really want them in like a chocolate brown. I just feel like we're not seeing much black and white everywhere. It's all that in between and all those tonal colors, which I'm loving. So you will notice throughout this, I definitely have a lot of black pieces and white as well, but I am trying to add more tonal pieces just because I feel like it's a lot softer. It's less harsh on my complexion. And I've just noticed that across the board, no matter what 
everyone's color palette is people are definitely going more tonal rather than like black or white and you know to those extremes so they're just a few things to be mindful of and that I've realized on my little capsule wardrobe journey so let's talk about the 20 pieces of clothing that I would start with first and as I go through it I'll also mention a few brands because obviously there are certain brands that I stick to depending on the item of clothing so I'm gonna start with tops now the first item of clothing is a striped blue and white striped button-up shirt now this is something that I've actually recently added to my wardrobe and it has just created so many outfits I love wearing it over top of like an all-white outfit I love wearing it over top of active wear and it's really transitional as well especially when you're just not sure what the weather's doing you can have like a little you know tank top underneath and throw it over the top it's quite breezy but it'll also give you a little bit of warmth if you know there's a bit of a chill around just a button-up lightweight oversized shirt is so good to have in your wardrobe now the next two pieces of clothing I would purchase are some basic tees and the colors I would go for is definitely a white one and definitely a chocolate brown usually I would say white and black but like I said I'm trying to go more tonal so my favorite all-time favorite basic tees are from Coz now I recently bought one from Elka collective it's like a beautiful chocolate brown color absolutely loved it but I don't see and when I look at the quality of it compared to the COS t-shirts, there's not a lot of difference. So I would probably just go from here on out. I'm probably just going to stick to COS basic tees because they're really good quality and really affordable. I think they retail for around $50 each, but they are very good quality. They wash really well. And when I'm looking at my Elka Collective one, it's still such beautiful quality. Don't get me wrong, but it's, an, it's like $90. So I'm paying a lot more and I just feel like they're kind of at the same range when it comes to quality. So I absolutely love COS basic tees. The next two pieces are almost like the most versatile tops that I have in my wardrobe to date and they are tank tops. So here I've chosen just like a scoop neck black one because you can wear that with active wear, you can dress it up with trousers and a nice belt and a nice handbag and wear it out to dinner. You can literally wear these tank tops with everything and there's so many different variations. So I find finding the cut that is right for you and sticking to that is really important. Some people prefer a high neck, some people prefer a scoop neck, some people prefer you know wider sleeves or spaghetti straps. Just try them all out, see which one you feel most confident in and stick to that. I also have another tank top that is a high neck because I find the high necks are quite dressy and again it's a very versatile piece. You can um, casual it down with some denim shorts and sneakers but then you can also dress it up as well. So they're the two tank tops that I would opt for because they're personally the ones that I wear most in my current capsule wardrobe. Now the fifth top I wanted to mention, this is one of those pieces where I mentioned before, this is straight up casual. There's no way of dressing this up and it's just an oversized baggy tee but I wear it so much. So I have a couple of these in my capsule wardrobe and I could not live without them because on days when I'm doing the groceries, I'm walking the dog um, and I just need to throw on a quick outfit, I will throw an oversized one of these tees with some active wear shorts or some denim shorts and I'm good to go. So I feel like I don't need a lot of them, but just a couple of them in my wardrobe, I could not live without. And then the sixth top that I have here is a nice black blouse. Again, whatever color is going to suit you. And I don't currently have this in my wardrobe, but this is definitely the blouse that I would choose. It's from the brand Age and it is just, it was love at first sight for me. I actually saw it on the Instagram page and I just fell in love with the sleeves. I fell in love that it has, I love one shoulder pieces. I feel like one shoulder is flattering on everyone. It's just such a beautiful blouse, but just having one nice, feminine dressy blouse in your wardrobe is so versatile because you can wear it with shorts, you can wear it with skirts, you can wear it with pants, you can wear it over top of a dress. Um, so you can have like a little black dress, put that over top and there you've got a whole new outfit. You can put it um, over top of a maxi dress as well. So for me, I would personally go with like a plain color because then you do have the versatility of pairing it with existing dresses that you already have in your wardrobe. They're definitely the tops that I would start off with. When I'm talking about the tank tops, I didn't mention brands. I love tank tops from Dish and Cook Eye. Do not sleep on Cook Eye. They have such beautiful quality materials. I've got a tank top from Cook Eye that I've literally had for over 10 years and it looks exactly the same. There's no stretch to it. There's no loss of color. It's because they use like 
um, I think it's like an elastane kind of fabric and it really holds its color. So absolutely love cook eye. Now moving on to bottoms. I have way, and I only realized this when I was planning this video, I have so many more bottoms in my wardrobe than tops. And I think it's because for me, tops are very versatile. You can wear a tank top with active wear, jeans, shorts, skirts, whatever. So I feel like I definitely need less tops and more bottoms to create a lot more outfits. So when it comes, and not to mention as well, when it comes to winter, I find it difficult. So of course, there are some pieces here that I would not wear during summer. So for example, jeans, like my jeans right now haven't been worn for months, but when winter comes around, I just wear them nonstop. So the first pair of jeans that I would opt for are a pair of the Levi rib cage wide leg jeans. I haven't actually got these, but I do have heaps of the um, rib cage jeans that are just straight leg. But I do feel like the blue color, like light blue wash looks so good when they're baggy. So they're a pair of jeans that I'm looking to add to my wardrobe. Again, very casual. I do think they're going to be hard to dress up, but I feel like everyone kind of needs one in their wardrobe. The other pair of jeans is just a plain pair of black Levi rib cage jeans straight leg because they can be dressed up and dressed down love black jeans with like a big cozy knit and some boots like that right there is such an easy outfit and always looks good no matter how many winters go by that is like such a beautiful outfit every single time so they're the two pairs of jeans that i would go and guys i am a jeans lover so to narrow it down just to two pairs was quite difficult but i think they're the ones i would opt for and then I would also opt for a maxi cream colored denim skirt. So I actually purchased mine from Sports Girl on sale. I'll link it below. But that cream color of denim is amazing. It looks really trendy. Um, and it's just a really, I don't know. I just love that color. It goes with everything in my wardrobe. And I feel like when I'm looking for denim shorts or jeans as well, I'm always looking out for that creamy off-white color. And then the last pair of long pants I have here is a white pair of linen trousers. They don't get old. They're just such a great staple in everyone's wardrobe. And I don't know what it is about white linen trousers, but every single time I wear them, I get compliments. And every time I see other people wearing them, I always have to compliment them. They just look so fresh, so luxe. And I purchased mine from Dish, absolutely love them. And I believe they have different color variations as well in case you don't want to go for white. Moving on to shorts, I've got two pairs of denim shorts, which is quite hard to narrow these down because I wear a lot of denim shorts. Again, in the cream color, these ones in particular are from Thrills. I believe they're called the Coco Shorts. So beautiful. They're high-waisted and they've got a hem. Just love them. Again, you can dress them up, dress them down. Sorry, I keep saying that. And then another pair, you can get them from the same brand, Thrills, the Coco Shorts, in a light wash denim. Mine are from Zara, but it's just hard because with Zara styles, they come and they go. And whenever I try to link them, they're sold out. So I feel like... A great brand to look at is Thrills. There's also A brand. What's another good denim shorts brand? Uh, it's kind of hard because denim shorts are so, depending on your body type, you really have to try them out. But for me, I really like Thrills and I really love A brand. So they're the denim shorts. Then I've also got a skort here from Dish. These Dish skorts are a game changer because they look like a skirt, but you don't have to worry about bending over. Um, anything like that. I absolutely love mine. I do have two, but I've picked out the white one in particular because I just wear it a lot more often. I feel like it goes with a lot in my wardrobe. And again, you can wear this skirt with sneakers and an oversized tee and it'd be super casual, or you can wear it with a nice blouse and head out to dinner. So absolutely love their skirts. And then the last pair of shorts I wanted to mention is of course a pair of activewear shorts. I have tried so many different brands of activewear and you're just better off paying the money and getting Lululemon because they don't dig in anywhere. They're so soft they're squat proof and for me personally I feel like with tights that is the only criteria I have as long as it doesn't dig in where all the seams are I'm happy and for me that is Lululemon every single time and I find active wear tights so versatile I mean it depends on your personal style and your lifestyle but for me I am one of those people that don't only wear active wear when I'm being active. I love to wear it when I'm running errands, doing the groceries, and there's so many cool outfits that you can create with some tights. So moving on to outerwear and knitwear, again, because it's only cold like two months the whole year here, we don't need a lot of it, but when it is cold, I pretty much live in knitwear. So the first piece that I would definitely purchase if I had to start my wardrobe again is like a big oversized chocolate brown knit. I think they're so beautiful, and again, I already do have a black one, but I'm just steering 
um, away from black and I just I'm just not gravitating towards it at the moment and because I have a lot of black handbags I feel like that is enough black for me when I'm adding it to my outfit so just having black shoes and handbags is enough and then with my outfits if I can keep a little more tonal so I would love a big um, chocolate brown knit I find knitwear incredibly difficult to find because I think you know where we live so if you guys live elsewhere and um, you experience the cold a lot more and you know some really beautiful brands that have knitwear please let me know in the comments below I also would love to get a really good quality gray knit jumper um, maybe more of a turtleneck I've seen one on lily silk that I am eyeing off it's really good quality and I just know I'll wear it because last year I bought a, bought a grey knit sweater and I lived in that thing but it wasn't the best quality. Uh, I think it cost me like $60 and after a few washes you could really tell um, yeah it was kind of losing its shape and everything so I feel like that one might have to go but I definitely want to replace it with something a little better quality. So, and the third piece of like outerwear is definitely a blazer. So I do have, I've had trench coats in the past, I've had other coats but for me blazers just get the most wear and you can select whichever color is going to go with your wardrobe but again they're versatile you can dress them up you can dress them down you can put them over active wear and with sneakers and they look quite cool um, or you can wear them with a nice dress I just get so much wear out of my blazers during autumn winter um, in terms of color if I had to start again I'd probably go for this slate color from dish I think it's so beautiful um, it's just something a little bit different at the moment I have a black one which I'll probably just end up using this winter um, it's such good quality and I did get it off Depop for such a steal. It's like a $400 blazer and I got it for like $150. I'm going to try and find that blazer on Depop to be honest. I feel like Dish is one of those brands that's so popular but there's a lot available on Depop for like half the price so I'll jump on there and have a look. Moving on to dresses, I've picked out two. The first one is a little black dress. This one in particular is from Beck and Bridge. I've had my eye on it for so long. My friend actually has it. It's a beautiful thick material. It's high neck. I believe this dress is called the Clover Dress and it's just really beautiful. It's very simple and I just know that I would be able to get a lot of wear out of it. I do have a couple of black little black dresses in my wardrobe right now, but they're very kind of particular and you can only wear them with certain things. So if I was to you know start afresh I would probably go for something like this because it's just a very simple design but I know for a fact that that fabric is quite thick so although it looks tight it's not going to be you know not everything is on show it's got a nice cut to it and it's thick enough that it you know you know what I mean it covers everything and then the other dress I would purchase is I would just go for like a maxi linen dress something that you can wear to a wedding but also can be worn casually because Again, dresses, it's really easy to buy dresses that are almost too dressy. So then they kind of just hang in your wardrobe and never get worn. So if you can go for more of a casual look, I feel like that's the way to go. And linen um, fabrics do that really, really well. So there is one at Dish that I tried on. It's a one shoulder. It's in chocolate brown. I know I keep saying brown. I'm just obsessed with that color at the moment. Um, and it just looks so gorgeous on. Um, but again, you could potentially wear it during winter with like an oversized knit over top and then it just looks like you've got a maxi skirt on with a nice knit jumper. So they're the 20 pieces that I would purchase first and they would create so many outfits. So when I was kind of planning all of those pieces, I was just thinking what are the pieces that I reach for most and which brand would I go to and which colorway would I purchase if I, you know, knowing what I know now, because like I said, I feel like I've done a lot of trial and error with a lot of brands and I just know what's worth it and what's really not worth it. Now that I've run through all the pieces, I wanted to share with you a couple of unlikely combinations. So these are just ways that I have styled my clothes in my capsule wardrobe to create a heap of new outfits. I've already mentioned a couple of these, but um, I just can't get enough of blouse, uh, blouses over top of dresses. Simply buy yourself a really nice blouse, put them over top. Um, if you can find a blouse that kind of cinches in at the bottom, I have one from Age and it has, it's just amazing because you cinch it in and it honestly looks like I'm wearing a skirt with a top. Um, and same goes for anyone that has a lot of tops and beautiful blouses in your wardrobe. Maybe just go out and buy yourself a really nice, simple black dress, um, either maxi or short and put those blouses over top. And again, you've got a heap of different outfits. 
Um, so I absolutely love that combination. Same with knitwear. Put knitwear over top of a dress. Love rocking that throughout winter with some boots. Love a maxi dress with boots and like a big jumper over top. Always looks so good. Now another little combination that I've just been obsessed with lately is button up shirts over top of active wear or over top of anything that's tight. So I know there would be a lot of people out there that don't opt for tight clothing because it might make you feel uncomfortable. Um, I know for me, I am exactly the same. I never wear active wear that's just all tight. I always like to wear like a baggy shirt with it or I like to wear, yeah, just something over top. So button up shirts are such a great way to just make you feel comfortable because they cover quite a lot. So you can put them over top of tight active wear. Again, you can put them over over top of like tight knit dresses, a nice button up shirt over top always looks nice. And you don't always have to wear it, you know, full, you know, over the shoulders. You could always just put the button up shirt over one shoulder, leave this one kind of hanging down, maybe button up one button or two um, over top of a tight dress. And that always looks really chic and really nice. So that's why button up shirts are so great and so versatile and just yeah, again, create a lot of outfits. The last little combination that I wanted to mention, and it's not a revelation. It's a revelation in my own mind. I don't know why I haven't done it earlier, but I always struggled to wear skirts. I have quite a few beautiful skirts in my wardrobe and just never knew how to style them. And I think it's because I always looked at skirts as something that was quite feminine, quite dressy. So I always paired them with very dressy and feminine um, tops as well. Um, but my personal style, I never like to be too girly. I always like to tone it down a bit. So what I've been doing lately is wearing like just basic tees with all of my nice skirts and it looks great. So you're probably listening to that going, Shannon, why are you even mentioning that? It's, you know, that, it, that ain't a revelation. But for me, it has been. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you have some really beautiful pieces in your wardrobe that you're not reaching for, but you really don't want to let go of them, try them with unlikely combinations. That should be like the tagline of this video right now. Um, but just try them with unlikely yeah, pieces that you never would usually try them with and see how you go because it's amazing um, how many pieces you can give a new life if you just kind of step outside of your comfort zone. And that's what I've been really trying to do lately and I'm really enjoying my style at the moment. I haven't enjoyed it this much for a long time and I always put myself in this little box as I'm sustainable, I am, must have a capsule wardrobe, I must only stick to minimal. But to be honest guys, I was getting bored. So if you guys watch a lot of my videos and you're feeling a little bit the same, add the odd trendy piece to your um, wardrobe and it will again revive all of your outfits. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will definitely be doing episode two where I run through the handbags I would purchase if I had to start again, the accessories I would purchase and same with shoes. I'm really excited to see what pieces I end up with in that video, especially when it comes to handbags. Like what like top three handbags would I select if I had to start again? So if that's a video that you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. And I would love to know in the comments below, what are items of clothing that you just cannot live without or any unlikely combinations um, that have just created so many more outfits in your wardrobe. So anyway, guys, I hope you have a lovely day or night, depending on where you are and what time you're watching this. And I'll catch you all in my next one. Bye, guys.